All right, welcome back here on HQ. It's been a fluid situation since the morning started. We, we had yeah. the NBA last night, the MLS moments ago. Then also in the NCAA, the Big Ten, the SEC, and American all out canceling their respective tournaments moments ago. Yeah, and they may not be the last. Apparently the MAC is uh, taking the temperature of uh, coaches and players and they're going to make a decision post haste as to what they're going to do likely to announce around noon so that's we're looking at about four or five minutes uh, we'll, we should hear from the Mac the Big 12 is also considering canceling their tournament so I mean you talk about the conference tournaments all getting underway the ACC is still going they're tipping off in four minutes their tournament yeah, yeah. and of course oh and just, just in, in just in Big 12 right, is Dennis canceled. Dodd reporting that the Big 12 had just canceled just moments ago, literally just canceled. That adds four. Now Big 10, SEC, American, and now the Big 12. We're all over it. We've been all over it all morning. We'll continue to be all over it. CBS Sports HQ, the place you want to be. We will talk about the cancellations after the break. Stay with us. Welcome into CBS Sports HQ here in Fort Lauderdale. Jeremy St. Louis alongside Brandon Baylor. We've been with you all morning as we talk about the coronavirus impact on sport. It is an impact that continues to be felt minute by minute, hour by hour. Things are just changing. And the NBA first shoot a drop last night by suspending their league. And now it is all just rolling out. Brandon. The dominoes starting to fall. We saw MLS moments ago suspending their season. But then in the college ranks, NCAA, we questioned the open arenas, how that was going to work out. But the Big Ten, the SEC and American. And then moments before we just got back on the Big 12, you can add four conferences canceling their conference uh, championships just moments ago before we got on air. And add the MAC to that list. The MAC just canceled. The producer just telling us that uh, the MAC has canceled as well. Conference USA in there too. So the PGA, the PGA commissioner is speaking and he says the PGA will continue, but they will continue with no fans. TPC Sawgrass, of course, the site of the PGA Championship, Players Championship this weekend. So moving forward, there will be no fans in attendance at TPC Sawgrass. So. Yeah. There Five college conferences, of course, canceling. That is big news considering yep. the day we came in with just the NBA, uh, the MAC. And now remember Big Ten, of course, Tom Izzo saying we should cancel it. That is happening now. And speaking of the NCAA, it's starting to ramp up a little bit. Yeah, as you mentioned, Tom Izzo's comments this morning, the Michigan State coach saying that, yeah, you know what, we should cancel these. And let's bring in our Matt Norlander uh, for more on uh, college basketball. He is one of our CBS Sports College basketball writers. Matt, you've been hearing what's been going on. You've been, uh, you know, on the on the ear with us for, for a few minutes here. What's your reaction to all of this as all these dominoes seem to be falling at once? This was the anticipation. I had a I had a top 25 coach tell me uh, early this morning, I think there's a small chance our conference tournament gets played. He was referring to the Big Ten. Uh, wouldn't start to surprise me if we, if we saw that these were canceled late in the morning. That wound up happening. There's obviously continued speculation over the uh, potential cancellation of the NCAA tournament altogether. All eyes uh, pointed toward Indianapolis. We'll also note, of course, with the Big Ten being canceled, that tournament was to take place in Indianapolis. That's where the NCAA is headquartered. The selection committee, for those that might be curious, is actually based in New York City right now. That selection committee is comprised of athletic directors and conference commissioners who are preoccupied. Frankly, uh, if you told me that they had not really started that process in earnest, it would not shock me considering all the news there. Also have a source on hand at the Big East uh, who texted me and said, I don't know. I'm on the court. The anthem is playing. This is an out-of-body experience. So uh, potentially the Big East is going to be going off here. But if we have a cancellation after the first game, it wouldn't surprise me because, gentlemen, uh, when you have this many conferences making this decision all at once, we could easily have a domino effect here. The coming minutes, not even hours, the coming minutes could, uh, could have the news changing with a quickness. And with that, we will wait news with the NCAA tournament. In the short term, in the short term, uh, for the purposes of going forward as though the NCAA tournament would be played, uh, for those that might be curious, each conference has the right to determine who would get an automatic bid. So in this instance, it would be a Wisconsin out of the Big Ten because it was the one seed in the tournament and so on and so forth. But that's just uh, a trivial side note here. We wait to see 
uh, the latest statement out of the NCAA, which I would expect to happen later this afternoon. Yes, and they just tipped off. The ACC just tipped off their games. So you've got all these conferences canceling at noon, and then you have the ACC, which is tipping off, saying that they will go ahead. Their commissioner, Don Swarford, said this morning, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, we're a full go until further notice. But now, as you mentioned, things could be changing so quickly, minute, literally minute by minute. So what do you think that this means for the NCAA tournament? Is it inevitable that they're either going to have to cancel it or postpone it at this point? Do you see this tournament going ahead, Matt? I do not. I would love to be wrong. I would so, so love to be wrong about this. But uh, when you are seeing widespread uh, amendments, if not cancellations, made to sporting events around the country here, uh, the NCAA, Mark Emmert, and uh, the big players in that organization, the board of directors, are discussing today about what is logistical going forward with a news story on a global level that has the capacity to significantly change hour by hour. I had one coach, uh, I mean, I had Steve Wojciechowski of Marquette text me minutes before we went on the air, are they gonna cancel the NCAA tournament? You know, so this is, ab this is absolutely on the minds of the coaches and the players who of course want to, they want the public health and the best interest of the, of the general public to, to come first, but this is a very hard thing to interpret in real time when you have worked since last summer and practices began in September to get to the biggest moment. You're on the doorstep of postseason play and now it's all just ripped away from you. It's a hard thing to reconcile for those players and those coaches. As someone who covers college basketball, Matt, I mean, for you, what what is this like for you? Someone who covers this, you've covered these players, you've covered these teams all season long. I mean, you talk about the fact that, that they've been on this road, you've been on this road with them as well. What does it mean for you in terms of covering this sport that you have such an unprecedented thing going on? Yeah, it's wild. It is it is surreal. Um, obviously, we've never had anything like this. And, you know, you get to a point where a lot of people are just reaching out to say, what are you hearing? Is this going to be canceled? Is there any way of postponing it? Postponing it doesn't seem logistically possible. I think that's I think that's the hope of everyone uh, you know, basically connected to the sport from administrators to athletic directors, coaches, players. Can you possibly like can we just push the NCAA tournament back? three weeks and still play it but there are a lot of logistical hurdles i don't know if it's 100 percent impossible but it seems highly unlikely but if there's any way possible to make the tournament <laughs> as still a thing in 2020 trust me the ncaa is going to consider every possible option this is a i don't i won't say a stunning list because after the news with the nba on wednesday night this is what happens here but the fact that by noon on thursday we're talking about eight leagues that have canceled their conference tournaments with more sure to come yes it's uh it's a significant, significant uh, sporting event and, and, and news item in the, in the history of this country. What do you make of John Swarford's comments, the ACC? Obviously, they're the odd man out now with all these tournaments kind of canceling. What do you make of his comments this morning uh, about the fact that they plan to go ahead because of the fact there has not been a positive test? Well, again, because this is an hour by hour thing, the comments that he made uh, earlier in the morning could be outdated by one o'clock in the afternoon, let alone five o'clock this evening. So um, in that moment, John Swafford, who is considered one of the leaders in college athletics over like among the most powerful and influential people in college athletics for him to make that was no insignificant statement. But he's going to be quickly overruled by the judgment of his peers in terms of the, co the cancellation of these conference tournaments. And you know, this, it goes without saying, but might as well say it. Like, this is among the three or four, the NCAA tournament is among the three or four largest sporting events in America each year. So the, the cancellation of it is devastating on local communities, on the economy, let alone the impact on just um, the players and the coaches that want to be involved in this. It is, uh, it, it, it really is something here. And there are still many unresolved questions just in general going forward that the NCAA has to address and answer. And I would assume we'll do so in the in the coming hours here because when this when this happens everyone again looks to indianapolis looks to mark emmer looks to the board of directors and said okay what are we doing here now can we still conceivably can we wait can we even wait 16 hours and see where we are as a country yeah. with the coronavirus story with the spread is the spread multiplying so fast that we have no choice or can we actually just sit and wait to see what's going to happen these are the very hard decisions that that board of directors, which is relying on its expert blue ribbon COVID-19 panel uh, to decide. And I think that we will get some answers sooner rather than later. That's what I wanted to ask you about the timeline. You have Selection Sunday, which is coming up. You have all these, you know, all these conferences that are opting out. So how fast do you expect the NCAA to make this decision? 
I think it's going to come sooner than later for for this particular reason. With the cancellation of the conference tournaments, uh, there's the shock of that. You kind of absorb it. You analyze it, but then it's like, okay, so now there are no there are no automatic bid winners. So if the selection committee right now is supposed to be picking teams for the field and seeding it, like what are they even doing? How are they even supposed to do their job? effectively right now and by the way it's a tough job to do they do it in a four or five day period there's a lot of work these are 14 hour days okay so if that's not even getting done that message is obviously being filtered um the vp of, of ncaa men's basketball dan gavitt is in the selection committee room but he's also a key component uh in being a part of the decision making with the ncaa overall so he is a he is a key figure here and i guarantee you um there are big time conversations and decisions being made in real time right now uh, it would not stun me if we had, if we learned by the end of Thursday that the NCAA tournament was canceled. I don't think that that's a 100% guarantee. But with so many conference tournaments doing this, the ripple effects uh, and the reverberations will be significant, and the pressure will be on Mark Emmer and the NCAA to make a definitive, declarative statement sooner rather than later, Friday at the latest. But if it came Thursday, I would not be surprised. CBS Sports College basketball writer Matt Norlander joining us. Thanks, Matt. Great information as always. I'm sure we'll see you later on the day today. All right, Tim Doyle joining us over the phone here. And Tim, just your reaction just moments ago, the Big Ten SEC, American Big 12, C, uh, Conference USA and the A-10, along with the Pac-12, all canceling their tournaments. Your reaction just hearing this, honestly, just in, within the 10 minutes. As a former player, you're incredibly disappointed. As an adult, uh, as a human being, you're proud that everyone is making the right decision. This isn't like what they should do. Like, this is 100% the right decision. Hats off to the Ivy League. Guys, they were two days ahead of the curve when they canceled their conference tournament. And I remember coming on HQ saying, I'd be surprised there's going to be fans in the arena, in the stadiums for the NCAA tournament. Um, now, how that's looking is not too promising right now. Uh, now, as a gambler, what are we going to watch? What's going to be on TV with no live sports? Uh, get to know your neighbor, or maybe not get to know them. Get to know your actual family, because everyone's going to be indoors. So uh, I start wondering you know, about announcers I work with, guys that were sick recently. I've been flying across the country calling sporting events, been in arenas. Um, I'm calling a Conference USA tournament. I just got a phone call. That's going to be canceled as well. So I'm sitting in a Dallas uh, hotel room right now. And I'm trying to get on an airplane out of here, out of Dallas, back to my home in Chicago. But guys, what are we going to watch? And talking about in a few minutes, about 19 minutes or so in the ACC, Florida State and Clemson, they're going to tip off. Commissioner John Swafford actually saying that this was still going to go on uh, regardless of what happens in the next couple of days or a couple of minutes or so. And now you're seeing all these schools kind of backing out. Is there a chance the ACC needs to peel this back after this game and cancel their tournament as well? Yes. What's going to happen if one of the players from Florida State or Clemson test positive? How is that going to look for the conference or the commissioner? It's not going to look good. So... Uh, my advice is you have some very real conversations with uh, older adults, your family and your friends right now, because if Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, who are in top physical shape, NBA professional athletes, if they are coming down with this, then this is a, 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 a reality for everyone everywhere. And looking at the list of conferences uh, canceling their tournaments there, this doesn't look good. But when you look at this, do you still feel that the NCAA tournament will take place later this month? I wanted to. I work for CBS. I love college basketball. It doesn't look likely, right, guys? I mean, um, I honestly wanted to. I'd love to see if somehow they could play it in April. Um, there's going to be a lot of moving parts. Uh, this is all escalated very quickly, but hats off to all the conferences. I, I, it, in my eyes, they're doing 100% the right thing. Uh, congratulations to the Ivy League. They were ahead of the curve. The NBA and Alan Silver. Um, and, and now, yeah, I'm shocked that they're going to play these games. I know St. John just tipped off. Uh, if Florida State plays this game, my advice would be gamble on it because you're not going to be able to gamble on anything, any sports. Who knows what's going to happen with baseball? That's what I'm concerned about. What are we going to do for jobs? 
what is there going to be to talk about? This is how I pay my bill. Uh, so, uh, it, yeah, this is just a, a crazy reality, and uh, I, I'm just happy that everyone seems to be acting appropriately. All right, Tim Doyle, CBS Sports, college basketball analyst, joining us on the latest of tournaments canceled across the NCAA. Appreciate your time. All right, looking at the Big Ten, of course, one of those schools coming down. The Big Ten Conference announced today that it will be canceling the remainder of the Big Ten men's basketball tournament effective immediately. The Big Ten Conference will use this time to work with the appropriate medical experts and institutional leadership to determine next steps for moving forward in regard to the COVID-19 pandemic. The main priority of the Big Ten Conference continues to be the health, safety, and wellness of our student athletes, coaches, administrators, fans, and media as we continue to monitor all developing and relevant information on the COVID-19 virus. All right, let's now bring in another college basketball analyst for CBS Sports, our Chip Patterson, who is at the ACC game between Florida State and Clemson, which is set to tip off in about 15 minutes' time. Chip joined us earlier this morning, and now we've got him on the phone once again. Chip, I guess, I mean, you've been hearing it. The uh, conferences are all starting to cancel their games, but the ACC is set to go ahead. Give us a scene set. What's the mood there? Everyone's checking their phones. Uh, no one's quite sure exactly what's going on as I speak to you right now. The clock continues to tip down, about nine minutes, seven, six seconds left until the teams are going to be back out on the floor. They were both in for shoot around, back into locker rooms one more time. I would think that whether the teams emerge from the locker rooms in the next few minutes will be our sign on whether or not they're going to play uh, this first game. And then it becomes a fluid situation on a game by game and a session by session basis where, you know, they've got the break between uh, the first two games of the day, Florida State, Clemson, NC State, and Duke. There would be a chance to reassess the situation. Uh, but right now, again, both teams, Florida State and Clemson, have gone through the regular warm-up procedures. The clock continues to tick down. And, and everyone here, you know, families, staff members, media members, everyone just continues to check their phones and, and continue to get the, uh, the latest updates from across the country. Chip, how odd is it being there in an empty venue? Incredibly odd, and especially because Greensboro has been home to 27 men's basketball championships. Greensboro Coliseum has been home to numerous NCAA tournament sites and scheduled to do so again with the NCAA tournament first and second round uh, on the other side of this weekend. And so, you know, my memories growing up in North Carolina on Sacker Road have been uh, with some of the tournament's finest moments being in this building, and yet it is in this building, uh, you know, in the city where the league was founded that we are starting to get some of our most um, unprecedented, strange, and uncomfortable scenarios that we've had in uh, really, uh, you know, the history of sports. Is there a genuine sense? I mean, I don't, well, I, I won't go with the fear question. What I'll ask you is the Big East and the ACC are basically the only ones that are left playing. The Big East is tipped off, as we know, as we, you've got there, the ACC set to go. Although I, I'm just hearing the ACC just canceled. So the ACC just canceled. So it doesn't look like they're going to be coming out, uh, Chip. So, I mean, what's your reaction to that, that the ACC has indeed decided to follow suit and cancel? Um, just, just that they are following the instruction of the local uh, public health officials. And I think that what we've seen through this is this is not only dramatic in the world of sports, but this is dramatic all across the country in terms of how quickly the level of alarm has been raised. And so I don't want to... Uh, try and fault one conference or credit another for these decision making uh, you know these decision making moments because I think that what's happened is the level has been raised uh, on the side of local governments and local health organizations and the ACC the Big East the Big Ten the Big 12 everyone's tried to do the best they can at every single step along the process but uh, really surprising I mean everyone's about to I, I ducked out of the, the Coliseum area to talk to you because the bands were playing because yes the bands were here and the bands were playing. They were ready to go. This is an 11th hour cancellation and certainly something that's very surprising. Breaking news here on HQ. The ACC has followed suit in the NCAA and canceled their conference tournament. Our Chip Patterson is joining joining us on the phone. He is at the game between FSU and Clemson, which was set to tip off. Chip was saying that the uh, players had gone in for their warm-up. Now they're not going to come back out because they have canceled the tournament. So, Chip, at this point, would you be surprised if the NCAA does not come out within the next 24 hours and cancel the March tournament? I think there's so many options still on the table um, for the NCAA, and I think that there might be an opportunity to follow the lead of some of the professional leagues and that 
you know, we don't have to make cancellations right now, but what we can do is we can stop and we can pause and we can not be, um, you know, trying to force something through when the sentiment of the general public and other major institutions are moving in the other direction. So I don't think anybody wants to see the, the NCAA tournament canceled, but, you know, the way that this thing, uh, the way that this outbreak of the COVID-19 virus is moving, uh, I would not be surprised if, if we had some sort of postponement uh, as an option. Our Chip Patterson, CBS Sports College basketball writer, joining us here on HQ. Chip, thanks very much. Travel safe. Continue news here, of course. Uh, Dennis Dodd joining us on the phone covering the Big 12 tournament that was supposed to happen. No longer the case. And Dennis, you had a chance to speak to Texas Tech head coach Chris Beard. Where are you hearing from him? Uh, Chris Beard was out on the court shortly after uh, the tournament was canceled, actually taking a picture, a group picture with the game referees. You know, in other words, Sayonara, you know, this is it. He told me that with 12 minutes to go, the team had come into the locker room after its warm-up, typically getting ready for the game, and they were told by an official, Big 12 official, that the tournament was off. And after that, he said it was just, he just looked at his players and there was, you know, there was vacancy in their eyes. He really felt bad for um, David uh, Moretti, a guard who has family from Italy. I think he's from Northern Italy, where most of this is, is concentrated. Um, but he said he, he stressed that this is the right thing to do. Uh, you know, there's an outbreak in this country. He said, uh, I finally asked him as he walked off the court, I said, you're a competitor, you're, you're a basketball coach, what's in your gut? He goes, there's an emptiness right now, I, I want to compete. But in no way was he criticizing their decision. Their, their, their conference, press conference is going on right now. The Kansas City mayor has declared a state of emergency, and I think that's what probably led a lot of it. Uh, I think the ACC has just canceled as well. So we move on. And it is, I think, in the matter of 20 minutes or so, we had eight or nine tournaments cancel altogether at the top of the hour. Are you surprised that this honestly didn't come sooner this morning? It just now, it seems like at 12 o'clock, everyone's starting to back out. Well, I think people, there's no perfect way to do this. Uh, the gravity of the situation has changed by the moment. I mean, the headlines yesterday were, were almost one, one punch to the gut after another across all sports, not just basketball. Um, and you wondered what was going to be next. So now that the, you know, most of college basketball has, you know, turned off its lights, if you will, uh, the best way to fight this epidemic is, is for people not to assemble. And the Big 12 CEOs, presidents, and chancellors gathered this morning with that in mind. And within the last hour, they made the decision. All right, our Dennis Dodd there has been covering the NCAA for quite some time. CBS Sports senior writer. Appreciate your time, Dennis. All right, let's now go over to CBS College basketball analyst Gary Parrish, who is part of the Eye on College Basketball podcast. And Gary, you've been you've been listening in. You've heard the news. I mean, everybody has canceled except the Big East. Uh, Creighton and St. John's are on the court. Creighton uh, appears to be up by two, if the score panel that I have is correct. But is this a game that's basically going to be going to be played out? Oh, there we go, 13-11. There we go. St. John's is taking the lead. Is this a game that you expect they're going to play it out, and then that's going to be it? Because I mean, everybody else has canceled. Yeah, I don't understand what the Big East is doing right now, although it should be noted that uh, the Big East was one of the last power conferences to uh, pull the trigger, if you will, on allowing fans to attend. They did that later on Wednesday than most other conferences. Perhaps they're just uh, a little late turning each corner, but uh, I can't imagine that we go much further with that event. Perhaps this game is, is finished. I I'm not sure. But the idea that they'll start another game while literally every other power conference has decided it's not worth it to play um, runs counter to common sense. The Big East uh, should be embarrassed by what it's doing right now. And I can't imagine what it's doing right now is going to continue much longer. So, Gary, what does this mean in terms of the NCAA and the tournaments that are to come? March Madness. What, what does this mean for the big NCAA tournament? Selection Sunday, which was supposed to come up this weekend, what does it mean? Well, if you're somebody who planned on watching the NCAA tournament next week, 
it, just on television, even not in person, um, this is obviously not a great sign. It appears that most of the leagues will um, award their automatic bids to their regular season champions, but in some leagues we have co-champions, so they'll have to figure that out. So in theory, we, we could have a, a selection Sunday based on the, the data that is available right now. It would obviously be unusual, but is it possible? Sure, it, it's possible, but you know, it, it's Thursday afternoon right now. Uh, it's a long time between now and Sunday. Think about how much has changed in this country just in the past 24 hours. There's a whole lot of things that could change before now and Selection Sunday. Put simply, uh, while acknowledging uh, in bold that I am not a doctor, um, what the doctors are saying is that this is going to get worse before it gets better. And if it's already at a place where we're not comfortable playing basketball games, whether it's in the Pac-12 or the SEC or the ACC or anywhere else, I don't know how the decision makers at the NCAA level are going to be comfortable playing basketball games next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I uh, am not reporting this, obviously, but I will be personally surprised if the NCAA tournament is played next week. Yeah, strange scenes right now, too, in Greensboro. Our Chip Patterson is there. Florida State and Clemson had come out for the warm-ups, and then, of course, uh, told that the ACC has canceled it. Their, their commissioner, John Swarford, was on, on this morning speaking to the media, saying that their tournament's going to go ahead. Now he's reportedly talking to the crowd, uh, trying to inform them of what's going on. So apparently he's awarding Florida State the conference championship. So you need an automatic bid in order to get in. So apparently that's what's being that's what's happening right now florida state's being awarded the conference championship as the acc has canceled their tournament i mean gary when you look at this whole situation i mean historically you've covered the sport for a long time where does this go where where does this get placed where does this rank because this is incredible I, I think if if the list we're discussing is craziest things in the history of the sport this has got to go right at the top, at least in modern history and in, in my lifetime. I mean, we are on the verge of, of really not conducting an NCAA tournament. And even if we do, the best case scenario right now is that we play it without fans in the arenas. And ultimately, if the Final Four remains in a dome, without fans in a dome. I mean, that's unprecedented and obviously strange. But I will say, um, as recently as last night, um, or as early as last night, I should say, after Rudy, Go Rudy Gobert uh, tested positive for coronavirus and the NBA subsequently shut down its league or suspended it for an undetermined amount of time, it became clear to me at least that it was going to be difficult for college basketball to, to move forward. Um, even without fans, because it's a hypothetical, but it's a realistic hypothetical. All it would take is one player from one NCAA tournament team to test positive. And that team, the entire team and coaching staff, has to be quarantined. And teams that have been in contact with that team and that coaching staff would need to be quarantined. Put simply, um, how do you uh, conduct the tournament when one of your participants, if not multiple participants, are, are quarantined for a minimum of, of 10 to 14 days? Uh, it becomes impractical. And I think that this is something the NCAA is very well aware of. It's something that's under consideration right now. And again, uh, given uh, everything that we know, um, it, it seems uh, perhaps not far-fetched, but at the very least unlikely um, that we're actually going to tip off games uh, on Tuesday in the first four. If we're canceling games on a Thursday and the doctors are telling us this is going to get worse before it gets better, um, it's hard to envision a scenario where we're playing basketball in this country at any level next week. He is CBS Sports College basketball analyst Gary Parrish joining us with the latest as conferences across the United States cancel their championship tournaments. Thanks, Gary. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.